Hey, Bobby, you know we're not um, shy to use profanity on this this podcast. You know that. You know us all. Um, I, I know you couldn't divulge what was said between yourself and uh, Lorenzo Insigne last night. Are you able to on our show? Do you want to go any further? Yeah, to be honest, <laughs> it wasn't between uh, me and Insigne. It was uh, it was coming uh, towards uh, towards the bench. I was trying to defuse a situation there. But no, it's uh, it's not good, and it has nothing to do with what the camera saw. Uh, <laughs> I thought he looked at you and said, "By the way, Bobby, what a beautiful beard!" Yeah, well, he, he, he grabbed he wanted to take a tug on mine as he did with uh, Barry Banga. Wants to eat the little, the little <laughs> Billy Goat grab. Bobby, welcome back to Footy Prime. Um, commiserations on, on last night. Another tight affair. Um, obviously, you can hold your hold your heads pretty high after that two two match um, result. Um, we, we were starting today's show talking about the Canadian Championship and who needs it more. Like an MLS team or or a CPL team, in your mind, like which which league needs that championship more at this point in their development? Yeah, I don't know who needs it more, but we want it. That's for yeah. sure. You know, uh, as a club, uh, we want it uh, for the league. Every new thing, we're a new league, CPL, six years in, uh, but we're going. So every accomplishment uh, helps the league. Um, but as Forge, we don't walk into every game like this and think, hey, how are we helping the league? Uh, first and foremost is how are we helping Forge? How are we building our club? How are we thinking big? Um, so I think from that end, it's uh, it's club related. Now, if you look at it a little bit on the outside and you say, you know, who needs it? A lot of times, maybe the MLS teams to get into Champions Cup. You know, we have two direct uh, spots into Champions Cup through the CPL, which is which is great. Um you know, for a Canadian MLS team, um, they need to finish uh, top of the table. Um, they need to win MLS Cup. Um, you know, and, and not to say it's a more difficult route, but you got 28 teams you're competing against. For us, it's uh, it's eight. Um, but I don't know if it's a league-to-league thing. As a club, you know, we're, we woke up today and we're obviously disappointed that we're not playing for a championship. Penalty, by the way. It was a penalty. It was a penalty. <laughs> 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 these games and and we know it and it doesn't matter who it is and what league they come from uh, at this stage in any competition it's it's the fine margins that make the difference um, and it doesn't matter who was better in one leg and the other one um, that's sometimes what it comes down to and sometimes it's it's little things like that uh, Jimmy and you know that's something uh, we have to deal with um, you know as, as coaches and as teams it can go any way in, in a game obviously we want that one to go our way yesterday because we know you know that's the magic of uh, of these types of games uh, you know it's not about three points it's not about accumulating something in the standings it's about getting the specific job done and uh, you know unfortunately got away from us a little bit yesterday well you've got to be proud of your team right now the way that they're performing competing every year they just seem to be get, getting better and better gaining more experience how rewarding is that for you to see how they handle these big games now? Yeah, I think you know it's it starts with our thing, the big mentality, uh, and you know, and it's not about uh, it's not about moments. It's not about we're happy to play, and it's nothing against CF Montreal, Toronto. Happy to be playing an MLS team or a Liga MX team. It's you're there because you deserve it. You've won a round, you've won a championship to be playing in a competition, and let's keep on pushing. And I think that mentality has helped the guys. It's helped us grow, you know, even Jimmy, right from 2019, you know, you know, we got to play in CONCACAF League uh, that year. And uh, and that was something new, you know, in that first year, we I remember playing the first game against Olympia here at Tim Hortons Field. And nine of our starters were playing in League One Ontario the year before. Uh, and it was all about the think big mentality. You know, don't think about the opponent. Don't think about um, the moments. Think about what can we do on this pitch? How can we be tactically good? And I think that keeps on resonating year to year. And that makes it easier for new players when they're coming into the squad, you know, to understand that there's a little bit of responsibility playing for this club. And that's what I've wanted to build here because, you know, we, we all know coaches are temporary. You know, I'm a little bit of an anomaly being here for uh, for six years, but my time will go to at some point. It's about what the club is because this club will be here forever. Is that part of your mentality then, Bobby, as coach, like bringing in new players and and refocusing the group and and winning serially in in, in CPL? I mean, you guys just seem to do it over and over and over again. Um, but getting into Concacaf Champions Cup, challenging yourselves in Canadian Championships. What about your own mentality as coach? Like, how do you reset those standards um, year in and year out? Yeah, I think you constantly have to have to push yourself. You have to constantly try and innovate and keep on going. Uh, the one thing I've learned about uh, coaching in these six years, it's it's really tough to keep a team competing at the top. 
because it's easy for for these guys. And uh, I say it openly here, guys. Uh, our players aren't making millions of dollars. Um, you know, they're coming here, and and it's a tough thing not to, not to motivate them, but to keep them at the top and understand that. And I think that's been one of our biggest success uh, as a club, uh, as a staff, but also our leadership group within our captains and, and players. And then that resonates to the new players coming in. You know, we want to make sure we're bringing in players, not so much based on name or what they've done, uh, but a profile, but uh, an identity of players that we know are going to want to come in and compete. Because we also have to find the right balance between, you know, we've created this club that wants to win a lot, uh, and that's part of our tradition, but also in developing players. And that was always the toughest thing for me coming from the development side is, uh, is striking that right balance. And to making sure that we develop players and developing players isn't only about who you sell. It's about uh, Dom Samuel or, or Tristan Henry, who's left us um, be, before, you know, this, this league started, they weren't in the professional realm. And, you know, five years later, they're excellent players, excellent professionals. So it's not only about developing and moving on, but it's also about those players that are going to be playing in this league long-term. Do you use the example of, say, for example, Kwasi Poku, who leaves last week uh, in, in a record fee, young player? You know, obviously that's hurt your team, but can you use that as an example to the other players saying, listen, this is a pathway to, to perhaps a bigger league, uh, to get overseas? Is that something you actually sat down and spoke to the guys about? Well, 100%. Um, but what you try and make it clear, it's, it's about you, the player. You know, it's uh, you'll have the avenue uh, through here. You'll have the ability to play in in big matches, to compete, to get yourself primed as, as a pro for some of these these newer guys or younger guys uh, that come in. And, you know, everything else is what I always say. It's up to the market. The market is vast in, in football. It's yeah. everyone's watching. Everyone's doing things. And of course, we're a newer league and it's going to take some time. But I think there's been fantastic steps. We've seen players move on, whether it's for transfer fees or whether it's as free players, because players have moved in, in all types of directions. And, and that's only good. Uh, the most important thing, though, for players is, is you're playing professionally. You know, we've got guys on our team who are 23 years old who probably have over 150 uh, professional games under their belt. You know, that's also not an easy thing. Uh, you know, and have played and have won championships, have played in the uh, Champions Cup a couple of times, you know, have, have played these big matches uh, over the season. And that gets you prepared for, for what's next. But what's next is usually somebody else's decision. It's not ours. You can only deal with, you know, being good on each and every day you walk on the training pitch and in the matches. When you are recruiting off season for, for players, does the Champions Cup make a big difference to you to say, listen, we, we are playing in these matches? I think so. I, I think, you know, that's that's helped us. Uh, you know, this is year six, apart from one year when CONCACAF realigned their tournaments. You know, we've been competing in CONCACAF uh, uh, tournaments for five years. Uh, I believe it's 22, 22 games. I think as a player, it uh, doesn't matter what continent you're on, you know, that's an allure. That's something you want to do. Uh, you want to be able to play those games, whether it was before in CONCACAF League in Central America, which I thought was a fantastic uh, uh, tournament. Um, to now and the two times we've uh, competed in Champions Cup with Cruz Azul and, and, and Chivas I think that's what players want uh, and it doesn't matter where you're coming from if, if you're an up-and-coming player if you're a player maybe we're recruiting from Europe or from different places um, you know you're going to a club that competes at the highest level and also allows you to compete against big cl clubs that puts you into the shop window for the future. Despite being a level down from MLS, would you say, though, at this point that you and TFC have a pretty decent rivalry going on? Because that was that was nasty last night. So as a first leg, there's some history there as well. I mean, that, that must be a game that you guys get up for. Is it a legitimate rivalry? Can we call it the 401 rivalry, Daibi, at this point? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think uh, it's a it's a semifinal tie that we want to win. And uh, I think uh, they need everything to win uh, based on uh, based on how their season is going. And I always say the mark of a, of a big club is, uh, you know, how you're kind of treated by your opponent. Um, and the, our opponent uh, treated us, uh, you know, well with the respect of uh, we're a big club. And I think that's what we got out of uh, these two ties. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, for me, that's uh, that's excellent. Uh, and that's excellent for the game. That's excellent for the neutral. That's excellent for, for, for the growth of the game. Because, you know, yesterday's match had a lot of very good uh, scenarios in it. Um, both tactically and differently, you know, and I was asked yesterday, and I think John was uh, just on the show here. I was asked about guys like Borges and Schwanier. And I said, yeah, they're very important players to our team, but I bring up a player like Malcolm Duncan, who was playing at right back, you know, and I won't talk about the discrepancy in salary of Malcolm Duncan, 
and Insigne and Richie Laria that were playing on his side. And I thought Malcolm uh, Duncan was one of the best players on the pitch. And, and it was fantastic. And I think that's, you know, what you come out and you know that these players are ready to play not only in these games, but to compete and do things. Uh, and the rest, as I think it's it's two teams that really wanted a match last night. So it's it's only normal in football. Hey, Bobby, you know we're not um, shy to use profanity on this this podcast. You know that. You know us all. Um, I, I know you couldn't divulge what was said between yourself and uh, Lorenzo Insigne last night. Are you able to on our show? You want to go any further? Yeah, to be honest, <laughs> it wasn't between uh, me and Insigne. It was uh, it was coming uh, towards uh, towards the bench. I was trying to defuse a situation there. Um, but no, it's uh, it's not good, and it has nothing to do with what the camera saw. Uh, <laughs> I'm usually, I'm usually a guy. I keep my profanities uh, for the sideline. I try and keep it as clean as possible with everyone on there. But uh, I'll stay away from that one, James, for today. I thought, he looked at you and, I, I thought he looked at you and said, by the way, Bobby, what a beautiful beard. Yeah, well, I think he, he, I grabbed think he wanted Bangas. to take a tug on mine as he did with uh, Betty Banga. Yeah. yeah it, was, uh, it was a simple play that happened there. Obviously, two very good players uh, got into it a little bit, and then he decided to have words with the bench. I tried to tell him to keep uh, calm a little bit and, and off we went. And then he had some few words after that. But again, that shows that uh, how important the game was uh, to them. Um, that shows uh, the respect that they have for uh, for our club and what they were, were facing yesterday. And uh, it's only a good thing. To me, it evoked the Norwegian fairy tale of the three billy goats gruff. You know that one? So Batty Banga was the little billy goat gruff and you were the big billy goat gruff. And then Insigne was the troll under the bridge who wants to eat the little, <laughs> the little billy goat gruff. If it was a Greek myth, I'd be right on top of it. But I haven't reached the Scandinavian one. <laughs> it's weird, though. They're one. always weird, those Norwegian yeah. ones. There we go. There are. I think it's great, though. I mean, listen, I, I don't know what was said and hopefully it wasn't anything too awry. But you need these, these, these nastiness between two local clubs. I think it's really great for the game. We need to establish ourselves as a, as a football nation. We need more of these things, you know, under control, obviously. And I know you're trying to defuse things, Bobby, and, and thank you for that because God forbid we'd never like to hear you swear. That'd be yeah. a terrible thing. Uh, I mean, Jim, Jim, you, you coached against Bobby before. Did he swear in the sidelines? Do you remember? Yeah, that? he does. Yeah, I've heard him swear uh, many times. Right. <laughs> a little bit, in, a little bit in Greek. Somehow it, just, it comes out easier. You remember your youth and. Maybe hearing a few things when you did some things wrong from your parents. So it comes out easy. <laughs> so what's your go-to? Oh, yeah. There's not that many uh, go-tos. Not even a good fuck. Uh, no? That, that, will, that sometimes will come out if we haven't done something right within a process of ours. And mm. I'm more upset with uh, our players and not towards them, but just the uh, the situation. But yeah, that's one of them. So you're swinging at your own players, not the opponents, just to get that oh, straight. No, no. The opponents, uh, I can't control them and nothing. You know, it's it's all about uh, our team. Hey, did you and John, were you okay last night, post-match? There, there were reports you guys didn't shake hands. Uh, yeah, with uh, sorry, with John, I didn't hear yeah. that. Yeah, with, with, yeah, with John. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I walked over. I saw uh, Jason Divas, but uh, no one else. Okay. That's okay. brutal. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's football, right? You can get petty, unfortunately, at times. Yes. And like I said, for us in the media, it's freaking great. Yes. <laughs> I won't lie to you. We we embrace it. As, as Dubs gives me a terrible side eye there, by the yeah. way. That here, was here's, here's the thing. The, the game is the game. And and Jimmy knows that. I'm, I'm sure we had words for each other, maybe for one reason or another. Uh, but the game's the game. You know, we're both out there to be competitive. When the game's finished, you know, there's one thing we know before the game. Uh, there's three results. And yesterday we know there's two. So one of them is going to happen. Then you have to be able to, to live with that after the game and, and move on. And that's the beauty of what we have as, uh, as human beings. You know, we put right in front of left. Some people go left in front of right and we go forward. We don't walk backwards. We don't do anything. And, and you just keep on moving on. And, that, and that's my mentality. And I'm, and I'm a competitive person, you know, uh, on the, not on the sideline, but with the team and how we do things. Um, but once the final whistle goes, it's, it's done. Uh, I understand what I've gotten myself into here. Uh, yeah. I understand what the, what you're playing for, what the results are. Um, that you can't win all the time. You don't want to lose all the time, but that's the reality of it. You know, I know I sit in the seat where tomorrow, today I'm here running training and tomorrow I'm not. You know, and yeah. uh, that's the that's also the beauty of what we do in this job. Uh, and if you understand that, you you move along uh, happily as uh, as you go and you get back to work. I I agree with you, Bobby, because I think you know there there is a respect for the sport. 
and for each other. And you, you two coaches that are in the same position at the beginning of the match, we wish you all the best because you're all there doing the same thing. You want to achieve one goal and that's win. And at times the match does get heated. There's a lot of emotion that goes into the game. But as soon as that whistle's done, the first thing you win or lose, it's go over to the opposition. Thanks. Well done. Wish you luck. And then you're off. Even though you're fuming, you don't want to go shake hands. It's it's just the respect of the game and, and for your opposition. Because we're, we're, we're all in it together. And you know the outcome could be great. It could be bad. There's highs. There's lows. But at the end of the day, you've got to respect it. So I, for me, I, whether I won, I lost, and sometimes I hated it, and I had my head down, I walked over and give that handshake, whether you liked it or not, but it was just a respect for, for each other. So that's, for me, I think it's important after a match to, to shake hands. Dubs, you, you were saying? Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't really along those lines. I was going to ask Bobby, like you're talking about your mindset about moving forward and, and getting better every day, whether it's you as a coach or, or your group or an individual player, but looking back to that first leg victory where you guys beat TFC 2-1 into Morton's field, is there a teeny tiny part of you that's thinking we probably could have got an extra goal in that match? And then when it comes down to the end on aggregate, maybe there that makes a difference. Yeah, or, that, or that late goal. <laughs> not a small part there. it's not a right. small part it's a big part and, then, and the late goal is a, is a consequence of what happened in that game and yes i'll say that it was a foul the same way jimmy said there was a penalty that happens but uh, you know before that i think uh, the game can be four nil uh, you know and, that, and that's the disappointing uh thing um for us um you know it's uh, it's not a tiny part of me it's a big part of me um but yeah that's that's how the game goes uh sometimes and sometimes you're going to be able to do it uh, a little bit more um yeah, but that's the beauty of these uh, two-legged uh, cup competitions. You know, you go into the next game, you know exactly where, where things are and, and what you need. And of course, if we had another goal in the first leg and make it different, but then it also make their game plan a little bit different. You know, so mm -hmm. each thing that happens also uh, changes things uh, a little bit more. Uh, but of course, I think in the first game, we were absolutely fantastic. You know, if it was if the game had finished 3-0, 3-1 or 4-1, um, it would have been uh, something that was done. And I think, you know, over two legs, you know, one team was much better in one game. Another team was uh, a little bit better in another one. And, you know, 2-2 two, two aggregate, if we're in UEFA, we'd be in penalty shots. Yeah. Is it time to ditch away goals, Bobby, in the uh, can championship? championship? Yeah, it, it's, it's always a strange thing because we were talking about it even in, in Champions Cup earlier. And we're like, oh, mm -hmm. CONCACAF still hasn't uh, hasn't changed. And yeah, maybe. You know, I'm not going to say it for, you know, our, our tie here, but we see that it's made things a lot more interesting in the other competitions around the world, you know, where teams aren't so much playing the away goal or, or playing the game, but the game is just being played a little bit more naturally. Uh, and I think that's made it a little bit more exciting. I may be wrong, but, you know, that's kind of my opinion on it. Well, listen, another great year, though, once again for Forge. Uh, good luck uh, in, in the run-in to the end of the season and then the course of playoffs. And uh, we'll get you back on the show real soon, Bobby. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Have a Thanks, good one. Bobby. Great seeing you, Bobby.